Wait a minute. Q, what are you doing talking about Destiny 2? Who gives a shit about that? Well, you'll see what I'm talking about Destiny 2 for. What's up everyone, it's Q from Retro Q Gaming, and if you have read the entire title of this video, and not just read the first couple of words, or looked at the thumbnail and then clicked in, you're gonna see what I'm talking about in this video, or rather you're gonna hear it, because, well, it's audio. The point is, anyway, I have some new info, well, we all have new info, this is public info, about the Destiny 2 PC beta release dates, or PC beta dates, whatever you want to call them, and the hardware system requirements for the PC copy. Now, I'm going to use this as a comparison to why no one should ever talk about the 8th generation of consoles in any type of power and lack of, you know, to say they're not lacking power in any way, shape, or form. Because we all know they were terrible when they launched, and it's just getting worse. So, strap in. You'll see what I'm talking about. I'm going to hit you with facts, not opinions, but straight up numbers and facts, okay? So if you don't like facts and you can't be proven wrong by facts and you can't accept something like that, you're probably best off clicking out of this video. Now, am I saying that consoles don't have a place and should not exist? Eh, partially. But the point is that I can see why people buy them. Myself included, I have all the consoles, but my point is I can see why some people would get consoles versus getting a proper gaming platform like a powerful PC. Anyway, moving on, that's just a little bit of bias, if you will. So, let's look at the actual info that we have anyway. The Destiny 2 PC dates. Early access is on August 28th. You get access to the early access one if you pre-order it, they give you the code and boom, you're good to go. If you don't do that, you get open beta access on August 29th, one day after early access, and then the beta finishes up on August 31st. Remains to be seen what's actually in the beta, but you know we're not here to talk about that in this video. So what I do want to talk about that in multiple different reasons and multiple different facets is the PC system requirements. Now, first off, before we get into this, the game was shown off at E3 on console, sorry, not on console, uh, on PC at E3, and they were running on PCs, as I mentioned. It was running at native 4K, 60 FPS, on stuff like, I believe it was GTX 1080 Ti's, which is basically the most powerful graphics card you can get at the moment. But the point is, it was running at native 4K, something consoles weren't doing, at 60 FPS, again, something consoles weren't doing. But here we go, okay, this is where we're going to move on. And chances are that this updated beta version we're going to play in a couple of weeks because yes i have a code i'm just going to play it just to laugh at it but the point is that this version is probably even more optimized because they've had extra time with it now let's look okay so the pc minimum requirements are an intel core i5 3250 cpu or an amd fx 4350 C cpu from amd six gigabytes of memory and Graphics cards, you're going to need something like a GeForce GTX 662 gigabyte or above, or an AMD Radeon HD 7852 gig or above, which would put the graphic power of those cards roughly in the ballpark of the Xbox One. Because, I mean, you can get like a 750 Ti or something like that, or was it a 760 Ti, and outperform the consoles on most games, but it would put them in line with the the console level of stuff but i'm not here to talk about that specifically so let's move on recommended specs here's where the stuff i want to talk about comes in so you have recommended specs cpu a core i5 2400 or an amd ryzen r5 1600x we have memory at eight gigabytes of ram versus the original six and your graphics will be an NVIDIA GeForce 9, GTX 970 or AMD Radeon R9 390. So why do I want to talk about this and why do the specs matter? Because one of the big things that we all know about the consoles when they launched in 2013 was that they were using low to mid-range hardware from about 2011. So they were using outdated tech as it was. It's not just outdated tech, but outdated low to mid-end tech, which was kind of questionable at best, even back then, let alone now. And when you factor in that the, the technology from that time and the power of that technology and look at what can be done and what more specifically can't be done on the consoles nowadays, 
we see why the PlayStation 4 Pro and more so the Xbox One X are being pushed so big. Now, we all know the worst part of the consoles is their CPU. The CPU or, or well, APU in the PS4 and Xbox One is absolutely woeful. It is completely terrible. There's no way around that. And it's just straight up dumpster fire garbage. It's that simple. You look at all the numbers, you look at what a can and can't do, it's a terrible CPU. The Jaguar system, the Jaguar cores, the Jaguar architecture is just brutal. It shouldn't have been used. It shouldn't have even existed. It's one of the main reasons why AMD have been irrelevant in the the CPU field up until, well, a couple of weeks, well, a couple of months ago when they released Ryzen in 2017, which is another point we'll talk about in a moment. But let's look at this, okay? This is what I want to see. Let's look at the recommended spec, because don't forget, on console, you're getting 30 FPS, cited by the developers, Bungie, or what's left of Bungie, as CPU issues, because of what they call all their collision, and all their physics detection, and everything moving, and blah, 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 but they're citing CPU issues. Now, let's look at here. So we have an Intel Core i5-2400. It's a four-core chip. Yeah, it's a, it's a quad-core chip. It doesn't have any extra threads or anything like that, so it's not a not a four-slash-eight core. It's just a straight-up four physical-core CPU with four threads, so it makes sense. Now, it's running at 3.1 gigahertz. A standard 2400 is running at 3.1 gigahertz. This chip was released in quarter one of 2011. Just let that sink in for a moment. Extra protracted silence just to let it sink in. Anyway, CPU, a desktop CPU from early 2011, six and a half years ago, is running rings around your current gen hardware. It's running rings around your Xbox One X CPU, because that's just upgraded Jaguar cores. And Jaguar as a whole, as I mentioned, and you can check the benchmarks online, are absolutely terrible. You can customize them all you want, but the, fo the foundation, the fundamental levels of the Jaguar cores are just brutal, as it is. So, there's not much they can do about that. But another way I want to I look at it, when you have the, the core i5 2400 CPU and let's let's put it this way as well when it comes to the Jaguar the Jaguar is an 8 core versus this 4 core which is outperforming it 6 and a half year old 4 core CPU is outperforming it and now let's look at it in comparison to one other way as well you have a 2011 CPU from Intel as a recommended spec remember that 2011 that's the key 6 and a half years old versus an AMD Ryzen R5 1600X. The recommended Intel chip is six and a half years old from 2011. I know I've said it a million times, but I'm gonna say it again just to drive it home. And the AMD Ryzen R5 1600X recommended is a 2017 chip that's only a couple of months old. Why? Because everything AMD have put out in the last eight to 10 years up until early 2017, when they released the Ryzen stuff, has been absolute trash, and it's why they've been completely irrelevant. What's in the PS4 and Xbox One? That's right, AMD Jaguar cores, AMD hardware, terrible, irrelevant stuff. So you can see where it all comes in, and the fact that AMD have to use something from 2017 as recommended versus their competitors that can use something that's six and a half years old. It really goes to show you how bad everything they've done in the CPU market has been for the last eight to 10 years before Ryzen, which of course, I've said it before, I'll say it again, the consoles fit into that bracket. So it's just madness how people can defend consoles for not so much defend consoles, for the simple reason is, I understand why consoles exist, I understand why people pick them, but people, there are so many people out there, usually pro Xbox people, usually, now I say pro Xbox people, I mean pro Xbox fanboys, pro PS4 fanboys, or God forbid, pro Nintendo Switch fanboys, but they don't know anything about hardware. The point is, these people say 
the stupidest and most illogical things. And you can you, you can give them all the facts in the world, but they don't care. Just nothing will ever dissuade them. And you can give them one of those new... You could put a new AMD 32 tread... Or what is it? 32... 36 tread maybe? Tread ripper CPUs. And they'll say, oh no, this, the PS4 is just as good as this. The Xbox One X will beat this. It's... These people are just idiots. Now, I know I shouldn't be making videos just to s slaughter the idiocies of these people. But I, I'm putting it out there for more factual reasons than that. I mean, there are some people who don't care about this kind of thing. There are some people that don't know about this kind of thing. There are some people who out there who don't care or don't know about this thing and just don't want to care about it. But for the people out there who speak the absolute shit, I'm just putting them in their place with facts and numbers and things that can't be debated. And at the same time, I'm educating some people that if they're open to facts and education on that field. I feel like I'm doing a service, if you will, when it comes down to it. Because don't forget, on the PC version, it's not just capped at 60 FPS. It runs at unlocked frame, frame rates. I was going to say frame where. Frame rates... Better resolutions, none of this checkerboard and crap. Better graphics, better settings, better visuals, better everything. So, you know, what are you going to say to that? I'd, l I'd love to hear an Xbox fanboy or a PlayStation fanboy come and defend that. We already have people saying that PlayStation are paying Bungie to not let it run at native 4K on Xbox One X. We already have people saying that Microsoft are paying Bungie to not let it run at native 4K on PlayStation 4. Because power is apparently irrelevant. And money is just everything, it seems. Because boo-hoo-hoo, -hoo, my piece of plastic isn't as powerful as it, need, as it should be because I ignore facts and I'm an idiot. Boo-hoo. Anyway, that's all I have to say on this matter. More than I wanted to say on this matter. Because LOL Destiny 2... Enough said. But anyway, I'll eventually play the beta and laugh at it in 60 plus FPS because why not? So let me know what you think about the entire situation. Do you think, well, obviously you think these fanboys are idiots, but it really, what do you think it says about the console hardware when it comes to a game in 2017 requiring or recommending something from 2011 that can outperform? the consoles. Do you think this leads to the point where we need PlayStation 4 Pro and we need Xbox One X? Because don't forget, everything on PlayStation 4 Pro and Xbox One X is, as it stands at the moment, has to run on the base Xbox One and PlayStation 4 hardware. How long that remains a, an actual law remains to be seen. Because we're already seeing, hell, we've been seeing it for years, the crippling effects of the that lackluster hardware in the consoles how many years is it going to go on is it going to be 2018 2019 2020 when developers are going to come in and say hey listen we can do all this crap on pc and we can do basically nothing we can give a really really basic experience if you're making us run on the 2013 consoles with 2011 hardware it's, it's madness. Console generations go on way too long as it is, especially when you look at the 7th generation with the 360 and PS3. That lasted way longer than it should have. And this is looking to be the same way. Because with these mid-generation refreshes, it's looking to prolong it another probably 5 years minimum, I'd say. Just not a good thing, trust me. From a technology point and a quality of games point, it's just not a good thing whatsoever for, for the industry in general. Not just for me as a PC gamer, but just the industry in general. Because when you're forced to run stuff on old hardware, you just can't innovate as much. You just can't do... There are, are certain things you can't do that are you know developed in the next 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10 years that you just can't be done on the old hardware. So that's it. I've done and extended almost twice the outro at this point let me know anything to do with this in the comment section below hit the like button hit the subscribe button thank you for watching and we'll see you in the rest of the videos in my channel